I'm going to uh, tell you something about uh, three studies in uh, behavioral economics that we, uh, we do in, in Copenhagen. They focus on consumer uh, perception of specialty or of quality. Because how many of you tried this? You know, you serve really nice coffee and a really bad coffee to somebody only to find out that they prefer the low quality. I've done this uh, many times when um, copying with uh, consumers. You know, you've got your range of really, really, really nice coffees, different but all nice, and then you've got the commodity monster to kind of scare people away from that uh, business segment, only to find a significant amount of people uh, with preference for the lower quality. And uh, um, this is really, I think, scary uh, to, to experience. So we wanted to really understand this better. What happens? How can this be? So we, we, we crafted some, uh, some different research designs to, to test something of relevance for this question. Because what is high quality? We talked about that yesterday also. What is specialty? And uh, who decides? And where's the customer here? Because so often I think that the specialty coffee movement we are so far away from all the others, we, it would be interesting for us to know something more about the mechanisms of low-quality preference. As a uh, consultant, I have a whole range of different uh, parameters I use to, to make trade-offs between uh, quiz and quality, uh, quality to, to, to match a specific uh, customer segment. I just wanted to, to show you that pragmatically, I think there's a lot of ways to go about uh, defining uh, high or low quality, not in absolute terms, but good enough you know, to, to make decisions in the specialty coffee business. So I will not go uh, into these, but all these uh, parameters are relevant when designing a product for a different, uh, certain customer segment. And we wanted to use behavioral economics because behavioral economics is a, a certain trend in economics where you look at really on, on behavior. You don't ask people, because if you ask people about things, you can get a lot of bias. They say something, but they do something else. So you really want to pe put people in a situation where you can just observe the behavior and using just observing behavior and also physiological uh, measures. Uh, it needs to be an experiment in the sense that you decide, you allocate people to the different uh, scenarios so that it's a completely controlled uh, situation. And then you, in behavioral economics, people need to have an incentive to do something. It shouldn't just uh, be a not conscious act. It should be they want to do something. So they are really making an effort to do their best. And we uh, were lucky enough to have a place to do this because Jens Nørgaard from Café Europa is in the project group because it needs to be live behavior. You could, cannot invite people in a, a weird setting because then you're not getting real behavior. We were lucky enough that, that Jens actually wanted to accept that some of his customers would get low quality even without knowing it. Um, and uh, this, this customer segment is also uh, a particular segment in the sense that it's a really high quality and ex uh, an expensive cafe uh, where you get, you know, uh, the best stuff in, in town. So it's, 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 it, it says something about the people in this uh, particular study. So what we did was when the project was running, and it has done for weeks actually, it, we've spent a lot of hours um, when it was running, we've got two thermopods of filter coffee in the bar. So, um, and you can see here, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really nice filter coffee as is uh, sold uh, normally uh, in the cafe. And then we introduced this from one of uh, Jens's canteens that he's also running, um, the commodity coffee. So we've got, we had both in the bar. And then when a filter coffee was ordered by a customer, dice was thrown. And if the dice said one, two, three, the high quality was served. And if it says uh, four, uh, five, six, the low quality was served to the customer who had no idea that they were in a, an experiment. And uh, because it's, you know, we need to measure behavior, what we did, we had a student who was just sitting there in the cafe noting all events during the drinking period. We call this uh, drinking dynamics. You know, what is all the events over time when drinking a cup of coffee? And then it was random high-low quality. And when the uh, customer was, was just about to finish the cup, the student went there, uh, dressed as a waiter, and said, OK, got two cups of coffee, please taste them. And then they had the high and low quality, and they were asked, which one did you get? 
Then they had to guess which of the two was the actual one they had. Um, and the next question, um, which one do you think is the higher quality? And then the last question was, well, this is actually an experiment. Would you mind that we use the data? And only there it was revealed that this is an experiment. So it was real behavior until this point. These are the parameters that we locked, uh, and this is a bigger project. We got the data Friday last week, uh, so we've been chewing on these on, over the weekend. So for the final publication, there's a lot of parameters that we'll look at, not only the ones today, but I just took the, the, the obvious ones today. So you can see the events is sip of coffee, milk added, and sugar added. So here you can also see if sugar is added after the first sip or before the first sip. So you could also see some differences on high quality and low quality if there's a difference in if milk is added before or after. But we don't know this yet. Um, and also if there's a leftover, nothing, less than half, half more than half in the cup after they, they had it. So I would just like to take you through the, the different findings. So do you think they were able to guess what quality they were served? I, I think a guess would be pretty uh, fair to say 70% uh, would be able to guess what they got, and 30% uh, would perha perhaps not uh, be able to guess it, because there's a really big difference between the two cups, remember that. Uh, and the data said something similar. But the next question, which of these two is the high quality? Wouldn't you expect, you know, in a cafe like this to be, you know, 90% would be able to say, this is the high quality coffee, and that's the low quality coffee. A bit less than half is able to, while tasting it, point out this is the high quality. So if you take these two answers and put them into a table uh, like this, the two times two table, you would expect, you know, the people who was able to guess the right sample, guess the right uh, coffee to be the high quality, would also be better at, uh, you know, remembering. And you would also expect the people who are not able to get uh, the quality right will not be able to guess what uh, quality they had. So you would expect these to be close to zero, right? But it seems like it's not like that. There are many people who are not right or wrong about both things. So I would call this the specialty coffee persona. They are able to point out the high quality and also get, uh, guess what they got. And these are pretty sensitive, but they do not know anything about coffee. These are the unskilled people. And this I call the sensory skilled goldfish because they are able to, uh, to actually guess which one is the right quality, but they don't remember anything. They didn't, they didn't notice at all what they got. We also had a, a they could tick off if a, if a coffee was rejected. Uh, Non-coffee were rejected, uh, I mean, of the low quality. Yeah, out of the people who could recognize coffee served, half could not recognize a high quality, as you can see here. Out of the people who could recognize high quality, 42% could not point out which coffee they were served previously. So that it doesn't seem that there's a, a relationship between being able to guess the right quality and also uh, remember. Memory is an important thing uh, in sensory. It, only if you are pretty skilled at tasting, you're able to remember and compare the cup you had yesterday. So uh, memory is an important thing in, in, in sensory science. Uh, so that's why we think that this parameter is interesting. Uh, because we would be able to see this parameter change when people get more skilled, because you get better uh, memory for, for coffee. This is the most surprising finding, because we spend a lot of time having the students observe people drinking, and at some point we thought we were a bit stupid, even expect there to be any difference in the timing aspect of what they had. So here you can see, this is the accumulated dynamics of low quality consumption, and the accumulating dynamics of high quality consumption. And here you can see that low quality coffee is consumed quicker than high quality coffee. I have no idea why or what it means, but uh, <laughs> it, it seems like it's a fact. And we have to dig into the reasons for this, but I mean, this is completely random. So they had no idea what they were drinking. So this must be a specific uh, feature of the quality that is causing the dynamics to be different. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back for more conclusions on that, but uh, it's, a, it's a surprising finding. We also saw that those are in the fastest half are significantly less likely to de detect what quality they consumed. That, that sounds a bit uh, more obvious that if you're drinking quickly, you're not paying attention. Then we did another small study with the same coffees at a busy train station, the, the busiest non-touristic train station in Copenhagen with low high quality. Here we asked... 
Okay, this is a test. You can win a cup of coffee if you answer correct. But which one is your favorite? Which one would you prefer to walk away with? Walk away with is the behavioral economics. It's not just which one do you like. You can get one for free. Which one would you prefer to walk away with? And then they were told you can win a cup of coffee if you can answer correctly to the following. That's installing the incentive so people actually try to make an effort. Which one is the most expensive was the second question. And here I would say, I would expect people, because this is really high and really low quality coffee, I would still expect, you know, 80% to be able to point out or to prefer the high quality. Uh, but actually there was a preference for the low quality. Notice that this is lower than for the cafe and that says something about the difference in the environment. And then ability to detect high quality. You might have preference, some people might have preference for low quality, but still able to uh, detect high quality. So I think given when we really tasted the coffee, it had to be like this, 90-10. But it was half and half. So if you look at this, you can see the most interesting uh, number is this. People who are able to detect quality, they will tell you, this is the high quality. How many of those? You, we had 205 in the full population and uh, 109 of those were able to detect high quality, 109. So it's interesting how many of the, uh, of the participants who said, this is the high quality coffee. What was the actual preference of these people? And you can see only half, 109 in the full uh, category of people who are able to detect, only half of these prefer specialty. So they say, I know that this one is the most expensive, but I'll go with that one half of the people in that, uh, in that group. And I think that that was pretty scary. So I think this is the most weird category here. This really explains us that quality does not sell itself. And I think this is really interesting because we've got different categories. You know, this is the specialty coffee people. We've got different categories of people and with different challenges. The point is, it's, it's really interesting to zoom in to the, uh, to, the, um, uh, to the different kind of challenges we have for the different reasons for low preference for high quality. So I feel, feel that this uh, study is, um, is zooming in on making us a bit more skilled on asking the right question and find, uh, to find what is the challenge with this person to make them appreciate high quality. Okay, these first two studies is kind of mapping out preferences uh, in different scenarios. The next question is, how can we move people? And then we've crafted this research design that we'll do in, in, uh, in August. Jens has got some canteens where uh, the users, uh, they, they've got an employee card, so we can track the behavior. We can track what they, what they purchase. So we will have, first fa phase will be a three-week phase. One-third of the population will win one free coffee of the high quality. They serve the low quality coffee as it is, because it's a canteen. And then we will introduce a high quality coffee and they will be told that there's a lottery where uh, they will win coffee. So a third uh, of the population will win one free coffee. Uh, the other third will uh, win 10 uh, free coffees. And then the last third will win 25 coffees. And after this phase finishes, then they can purchase the coffee, the high quality alternative. And then we can see if we can install habits or if we can shift people towards quality by exposing them to high quality. I always tell people, don't, don't scare your customers away by saying, don't add milk to my coffee. You can serve them what they want and then you, know, you can add the freebie. This is, don't add milk to this one, I'll give it for free, you can you, taste it. Um, and don't add milk because I'd like you to you know, experience it. So uh, the, this uh, research project will tell you how many times do you need to give them a free coffee to shift them away from adding something. So this is an, um, an experiment that where we hope to give, uh, give some tools or at least some uh, first indicators on how to shift people between the different categories of uh, from low to high quality. So the conclusion is low quality coffee is consumed faster than high quality. I have no idea why. High quality environment like the cafe had higher preference for high quality than the consumer segment. High quality does not diffuse passively to consumers. And I think that is a, this study is a really nice study that give you some numbers of this claim that some people think is obvious, but it's really, uh, uh, 
according to the numbers, a serious uh, thing. And uh, half of the consumers who identified high quality versus low quality preferred low quality. The, I guess the point is we've got different barriers to convert people from low to high quality and we really tried to make a research paradigm where we can try to zoom in and, and, and get some more knowledge about how can we uh, progress if we want to uh, people from, to, to uh, uh, go from low quality preference to high quality preference. All right, that was it. Yeah.